Praise the Lord, everyone. My name is Brother Mario, and if you're visiting my channel for the first time, welcome. I love you so much, and I appreciate you clicking on this video, but we don't have time to waste. If you have navigated your way to my channel, you've probably seen the video of Justin Bieber leading worship. Now, I have to be very careful about commenting on this because, well, first and foremost, I want to let you all know something. I am not here to judge anybody, okay? I'm not here to critique, criticize anyone who chooses to worship God. I, as a matter of fact, I rejoice it. I love it. What I am here to comment on, though, is the idea of Justin being a worship leader in the future. Now, the biggest question is, could Justin Bieber be a future worship leader? And the answer is absolutely he can. Why do I believe that? Well, I believe in God and I believe in Jesus, his Holy Spirit and his transformative power. And if it's changed my life, someone who used to be very deep in the world and over time uh, has turned his talents and gifts with music, into being a worship leader, then absolutely God could do that with Justin Bieber. Now, with all that being said, would it take a lot of sacrifice for Justin Bieber to be a worship leader? Absolutely, 100%, a lot, a lot, a lot of sacrifice. Now, what do I mean by sacrifice? No, I'm not talking about he's gotta give away his money or his millions or his fame or any of that. It goes much deeper than that. This We're talking on a spiritual level here. In order to be a worship leader, you just can't have a good voice. You can't just have a, a pretty face. You can't just be able to lead people in song and sing along lyrics and allow people to raise their hand and pour out their passion into the music because Justin Bieber has built an entire career about doing those exact same things. As a matter of fact, when people are raising up their hands and lifting their hands in worship, they're not worshiping God at his concerts. What are they worshiping? They're worshiping him. They're worshiping the lyrics. They're worshiping the lifestyle that are in those lyrics, which is very much a part of this world. God is looking for worship leaders and most importantly, looking at the worship that they do throughout the week. Now, what does that mean? That means obeying the word. That means rejecting sin, rejecting the pleasures, the desires of your flesh. That means seeking him in prayer, fasting throughout the week to starve again that flesh and feed your spirit. That means asking for his anointment. That means that when you're on stage, are you the one receiving all the honor and the glory? Or are you giving all that honor and glory to our Lord Jesus Christ? See, he's looking at all these things for a true anointed worship leader. But it doesn't take a lot for someone to just worship God. See, it's easy to worship in church. It's anyone could do that. It's easy to get on a sidewalk, grab a guitar and just start singing and uh, people just come around you and start joining in. That's easy. It's easy to worship at Coachella. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. God's looking for that type of worship in a very private lifestyle because even Satan and his demons worshiped God. Didn't know that? Don't believe me? No sweat. Let's look to the Bible. In Mark chapter 5, we find a story of Jesus coming up to a demon-possessed man and casting him out. Now, we find in this story a couple of things. One, we know the name of this demon. His name is Legion. And there are many of them who are currently possessing this man. But look what happens when, again, the demon who is possessing this man, what he does when Jesus comes up on the scene. Verse six says, when he saw Jesus from distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want from me, Jesus, son of the most high God? First and foremost, we see two things. One, he recognized that that was the son of God, that that was Jesus. And two, he fell down to his knees. See, God wasn't lying when he said, one day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee shall bow. Let's look at another example. Luke 4, 4 through 41 says, while curing the sick, Jesus was approached by demons who called out, you are the son of 
God. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like some of us when we're singing and some of the lyrics that we use to worship our God? These are demons. These are Satan's followers, okay? Worshiping the Most High God. See, even the demons worship God in his presence. It's not hard to worship him. The hardest part is what you do away from church. How is your daily life away from your church family? Are you seeking him more and more? Are you giving into sin or are you rejecting sin? It's the sin, it's the sin, it's the sin that destroys man. Kind. So I say all that to say this. Justin Bieber, if you're watching this video and you make the decision that you want to be a worship leader, that you want to step away from the worldly spotlight and step into the calling of a worship leader, if it is part of God's plan, you have to do a couple of things. Okay, now this is from brother to brother. Okay, my man. It would be a tragedy if throughout the week, all right, and your concerts and your music, what you're promoting, you promote the world. Talk about parties, girls, all these things that are part of this worldly lifestyle. And then you expect to get up on stage Sunday in a church and expect to lead people in worship. See, the decisions that you make throughout the week absolutely affect your worship that you do on Sunday morning as a worship leader. Because remember, everything that you do affects the church. Because if you're living a double lifestyle, you are sending a filtered out message to your congregation. What do I mean by that? God has a mighty, mighty power and he has to use someone to get it to his people. And that's what he uses worship leaders for. That's what he uses music for. But if you have all this sin blocking you, only some of that power is gonna travel through to the congregation, but not all of it, not all that transformative Holy Spirit power will get to the congregation. So what do you have to do? That's when you take away the sin. You ask God for his forgiveness. So being a worship leader is much more. Again, I say this, I'm speaking to musicians right now. I'm speaking to worship leaders. I'm speaking to choir members. And if you're not living the lifestyle that is called of a worship leader, step down. I challenge you to step down right now, especially if you know you're doing wrong and you're choosing to hide it. It will be much more worse. It's going to hurt the congregation ultimately and all the people that you're leading if you're not living the lifestyle that's required and is called of to be a worship leader. All that being said, Justin Bieber, I love you, brother. We are brothers in Christ, and I hope that you find an apostolic church and you do three things for me according to the Bible. One, you get baptized in Jesus' name, Acts 2.38. You get baptized by that Holy Ghost that we find in Acts 2.4. And you follow peace among men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord in Hebrews 12.14. Thank you all so much. This video has gone way too long. I love you. Spread this message out. And thank you all for watching. My name is Brother Mario. God bless you. Hey, I hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. Definitely wanna know what you all got out of it. But most importantly, share this message. Share it with your best friend. Put it on your Facebook, slap it on your Instagram. Doesn't even matter. We're trying to get this message out. And hey, don't let your blessing streak in. Check out some of these other videos we got here. Hey, love you all so much. Gotta go, bye-bye.